Hi folks, welcome to RTC TV4. I'm Scott Sager. Today we've got a special guest with us. We've got Mr. Dave Colger from Woodlawn Hospital, but uh, he's also got a little hidden talent, if you will, and he's got a hobby that turned into a business that turned into a lifestyle, if you will. So we're going to talk to Dave a little bit about that. Of course, we're talking about Blue Dragon Taekwondo. That is correct. And you've been involved with Taekwondo for how long, Dave? Oh, about 27 years. 27 years, my goodness. This time around, I was involved a little bit while I was in the service. No with kidding. It, and that got me interested in it. And then, you know, after that, it was family and going. And right. then finally got back into it. You know, for anybody out there that wants an event to get involved in. Right. Um, the martial arts is tremendous. Yeah, let's talk about the martial arts for a little bit here. First of all, Taekwondo is a form of martial arts. It's a discipline of martial arts, correct? It, it is a discipline of it. And people will look and they hear Taekwondo and they think Taekwondo is all the same. Right. And there is different styles. Okay. Uh, there's... One, the organization we belong to is called the International Taekwondo Federation. Okay. And uh, the founder, General Choi, uh, ended up establishing that. He was from Korea. He left Korea and went to Canada. Oh, no kidding. And established the International uh, Taekwondo Federation. Okay. So is that known as the ITF? That's the ITF. Okay. Then... That left Korea with the Korean Taekwondo Association. Okay. And they changed their name to the World Taekwondo Federation. Okay, WTF. WTF. <laughs> so you got all kinds of things. And, and then you got people going back and forth. Uh -huh. But in the ITF, we try to stay structured with specific patterns mm -hmm. or movements mm -hmm. that's distinct to the ITF. Okay. The WTF has their... Forms. Uh, they're called Young's Pumse. Okay. Um, and then we have what's probably one of the more profitable uh, American Taekwondo Association. The ATA. The ATA. I was a part of the ATA and, when I was in high school. And the ATA has progressed from being a <clears throat> very, very solid group mm -hmm. to a very profitable group. Gotcha. <laughs> So they but, found a way to uh, turn the art into uh, capital business, if capital you will. Capital business. Made some money with that. I remember yep. uh, testing for my second degree black belt. Uh, it was $95 back in 1987 to do mm -hmm. that test. I can't imagine what it is in 2017. Well, it's uh, right around uh, $150. Okay. That's through your organization? Through, through my organization. And the one thing with my organization... And General Choi, when he uh, put the International Taekwondo Federation uh -huh. together, he did it in the very last pattern or move, group of movements is called Tong Il. Okay. And that means the unification mm. of North and South Korea. Interesting. His idea was to bring it back. Gotcha. As a yeah activity a national activity right. national activity yeah. and uh, his idea was that people from the itf and wtf and really it's no longer the wtf okay they got rid of the f gotcha that's the world taekwondo now gotcha gotcha and uh that how things change over time so one of the things I'm sure our viewers, um, it's for those that don't know, it's somewhat difficult to distinguish between, well, what's karate versus jujitsu versus this type of jujitsu versus taekwondo. That's right. Talk to us about the fundamentals of taekwondo and what kind of sets you apart from the other arts. Well, what we look at and we say it even sets us apart from taekwondo. Other, yeah, other taekwondo. Other taekwondo. Right. Mm -hmm. General Choi based his, the ITF, on three martial arts. Okay. And he used the base, the Korean, mm -hmm. Tikwan. Then he also used what was called Shotokan Karate from Japan because he did receive black belts in uh, the Shotokan Karate when Japan was, you know, 
over Korea. Right. They had invaded Korea. Took right. it. So he had that. And then he was in assigned to Malaysia okay. with the Korean army. So he took the uh, other martial art from Malaysia called yes. Salat. Okay. Which then he took the best of all of it right. and put them together. So not only do we have the kicking and the punching, we've got the slow movements, we've got the joint locks, we have the flipping, and it's how you use those right. items. Very interesting. So, so the International Taekwondo Federation, the movements, the mentality behind it all came from three other forms of martial art took the best of those to formulate this. Yes. Interesting. And General Choi, he did not do it alone. He right. had a lot of uh, other martial artists right. with him. And now that he has passed on, our organization is headed up by his son. Oh, no kidding. Jung Wa Choi. Okay. So it stayed within the family. That's fun. And they've sort of kept that tradition and that going. Yeah. So well, that that part's very interesting, and that's where we try to keep at the Blue Dragon. Uh -huh. And talk to us about Blue Dragon. Talk to us okay. about the name. Where's it come from? Well, you know, I could say being in from Michigan, go blue, <laughs> but no, I'm not. Uh, the those are fighting words down I here. I know it. Those are fighting <laughs> words. But uh, the. One of the Korean infantry divisions in Vietnam was known as the Blue Dragons. Oh, no kidding. And General Choi had trained the group in different ones. So it's more of a military and a defense yeah. system where the world Taekwondo is more of a sport. Gotcha. So you separate sport versus defense. So yeah. when people are looking for martial arts, mm -hmm. they really need to ask themselves, what am I doing it for? Right. They're not what, all the same. They're not all the same. And you get into jujitsu and Brazilian jujitsu mm -hmm. and, you know, all the others. You ask yourself, what do I want to get out of it? Mm -hmm. What do I want to learn? Right. And then you go out and you visit the schools. Right. And when you visit the schools, make certain you get some time with the instructors. Right. You want to find out what you're getting into. What you're getting into mm -hmm. it is a financial investment. Right. <laughs> that and is true, and it, I'm sure my mother would attest to that yeah, from the money she I mean, spent with me. It can, it can, lots of money. Yeah, <laughs> it can be, it really can and, be. And that, but General Choi's idea was you are not supposed to make great profits right. off the martial arts. Right. So you're more about, it, granted it's a business, but you're about training the self-defense, training the discipline, training the, for quite frankly, if nothing else, just staying healthy and fit. Healthy and fit. And, you know, in the belts, yeah. we talk about tie the belts equally. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look for martial arts school, make certain they address the mental aspect for one yeah. side of the belt and the physical aspect for the other. Yeah. So that they hit all the things. And look for the instructors, you know, how do you interact with the owner of the school? That might be fine. Mm -hmm. But is he the one going to be teaching? Right. Look at that. Look at what's my contract? Mm -hmm. What are they presenting? Yep. You know. It's just like any business transaction, quite frankly. It, it is. You go into it as a business transaction and look and see what you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And if you go in and talk to them and you come out with this little gut feeling about something's not right, look at two, three schools right. and compare them. It's like a second opinion from a doctor. You have oh. to find what's the, the right uh, school for you. For you. you got, you got to fit in it. you got to be able to address what you would like to get out of it with mm. the instructor and make certain they can get you that. Excellent. Um, one of the things we look at in the organization that Blue Dragon is under, um, the, not only is it the ITF, mm -hmm. but my instructor passed away at the age of 92 when he was <laughs> out on the floor teaching us. Oh my gosh. And he had a history. He uh, came out of the Ukraine in World War II. This was, he, this was your instructor? My instructor. Wow. 
he fought with Germany against Russia, who was invading the Ukraine back then. <laughs> right, right. How things change. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> or don't change. Or don't. That's a good point and there. That, and, and he followed also along with General Choi, and he was promoted directly by him, too. Okay. And we even had the privilege of working with General Choi. Oh, wow. Meeting him, having dinner with That's him. That's got to be a delight, right? Oh, it, it was an education oh, in itself. Sure, I'm you sure. know, to sit there <laughs> and have this gentleman come around right. and show you what the martial arts was used for. Yeah. And the respect oh and gosh. just everything. It, it was tremendous in itself. That's one experience, you know. Well, that's amazing. I look at it and go, that's great. That's amazing. Well, I want to talk about a, a lot of things here. Let's kind of jump into, kind of segue here for a minute. We've got a lot of patches and a lot of insignia on your uniform. You wanted to tell our viewers what some of those what, are about and what they're for. Well, this is where, with the Universal Taekwondo Brotherhood mm -hmm. and my instructor, the late, Grandmaster Humiski, mm -hmm. he believed the same thing that General Choi did. Okay. And that was that people from the World Taekwondo, the ITF, should be able to come together and work together as one. Right. Not change what we do, but to let each other know what the applications are, what the movements are. Mm -hmm. Let them look at it, let them see what theirs is. Mm -hmm. It's gone through different transitions. So one, one of these, my Grandmaster Janeski, he was started out in Chiang Mai Kwan, mm -hmm. and that's one s system that he kept going. Okay. Then we've got the ITF, yep. International Taekwondo Federation, and we have the Kukawan patch. What these signify is through this organization, what I, I can do is anybody that comes into the school and says, you know, I'd like to go up through the world Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. We have instructors and structure to take people up through that side of the oh, organization. We have the ITF side mm -hmm. that we take people up through. Okay. If they want to get their certificates or black belts at the Kukawan, we can take them up through that. Okay. So it just offers them more opportunities yeah. on where they want to go with it. Now you got to realize when you take these more opportunities, there is more cost sure. involved. Sure. But it just comes back to giving access and that to right. people. Or we can just sit there and say, okay, Blue Dragon, we can do the Blue Dragon certificates, mm -hmm. and that's where it's left, mm -hmm. and I don't want to do the others. But right, you, so it doesn't all have to be about big expense and, no. you know, bells and whistles or official certifications, et cetera, et cetera. No. They're, you, you kind of work it at their pace where they want to be. That's right. Okay. It's where they want to be. And I can take the Blue Dragons. We use... Uh, I say the traditional belts, mm -hmm. uh, and we use the traditional uniforms. Uh, okay. White know, uniform? White, white uniforms. Black belts get to put some black trim on. Yeah, talk to me about the trim. You know, What's, it, does this uh, signify anything other well, than your black belt? That's all this one signifies. Okay. Now, I debated about wearing my ITF uniform, which has black stripes on it. Yeah, pinning, right? And different mm -hmm. things. And that represents levels gotcha. of black belts. Gotcha. So you can look across the room and say, okay, there is, there's a six-degree black belt, right. or there's a eight-degree black belt. Or, now, in you know, your case, we're, we're, um, if we were to observe you, we're seeing that actually on your belt, correct? That's what uh, signifies what yes. rank you are. And what rank are you? I am a six-degree black belt. Six-degree black belt. And, and what that signifies is I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> you spent some time in the art. We spent some time in the art and dedicated to it. And it takes about 40 to 48 months to get your black belt. Right. And then exponentially more for each rank above that, correct? That's right. Uh huh. And you know, you want to get second degree, you're going to be another 18 months yeah. to two years. You're not going to be a six degree black belt at age 20. No, 
I mean, it's mathematically impossible almost, yeah. right? You would have to come out of the... <laughs> You'd have to be ready You'd to go. have to start out <laughs> yeah. the first kick degree the, black Kick belt. the doctor right yeah, away, right? that's right. And well, I guess there are some babies that do kick the doctor right away, but... <laughs> Maybe they're yeah, prodigies, right? That's right, but uh, it does take a while. So a sixth and, degree. And what, what sort of that signifies in that um, there are the tenets of Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And General Choi started the tenets of Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. And those tenets talk about the courtesy, mm -hmm. integrity, perseverance, self-control, mm -hmm. indomitable spirit. Right. You know, all those things are what the mental aspects right. of the art are. Yeah. And you've got to be able to show that you can do the mental side. And, you know, for the school... We have the kids bring in report cards. Great. All right. That's, that's for the kids class, the 6 right. to 12 year olds. All right. Then after that, we look at, okay, what are the kids doing? Mm -hmm. You know, are they getting involved in things like debate? Are they getting involved mm -hmm. in school activities? In positive school positive activities. Positive school things. activities. Or... Are they getting involved? Just leave it as positive activities. Mm -hmm. you that's, know, that's great. A, anything yeah. to support the community. Right. And then as adults, we look at it and say, okay, what are they doing yeah. on top of it? Yes, they're, you know, being good husbands, mothers, right. you know, that supporting families, building, working, mm -hmm. doing all this. And on top of that, they might be doing something in the community to help support it. Mm -hmm. All that goes into making the community better. Absolutely. And moving up that ladder of black belts. Right. It isn't a gift. Right. It's something you earn, and you earn it from both sides. I like that. I like that. So very holistic, if we were to, to put a word to it. You're taking care of the mental disciplines, if you will, as well as the physical aspects of things. That is correct. So let's kind of work this through a little bit, Dave. If I'm, uh, you know, if I'm a student, boy or girl, um, you know, in high school, all the way down through the, the um, elementary level, there's something for me to gain out of this. That there is. A lot of, and especially during that time of growth before we're 18 years old, there's discipline to be learned in life. There's responsibility to be learned in life. There's achievement to be learned in life. Let's talk a little bit about mom. What's mom going to get out of this if mom were to join? What well, mom's going to get out of it is stress and relief. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, I, good, I okay. No, I, I get no. it. Um, mom can beat up the kids and get them to do their chores right away now. Right away. <laughs> no. Mom, mom is going to get... One, the physical aspect, but there again, we talk about perseverance. We right. talk about self-control. Yeah. All those come into play yeah. in everybody's activities and days of life. You know, we get kids that, and I talked to one the other night, uh, I heard him talking back to his mother. Mm. <laughs> we had a serious talk. I bet you did. <laughs> on what it takes to stay in here. There's nothing like a six-degree black belt talking to your children about how they should treat their parents. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> some <laughs> or, life lessons there for sure. Or picking up their room or yeah. helping yeah. out, you know. Let's talk so. a little bit about self-esteem. That is one thing when I was in uh, Taekwondo, uh, and that was through the ATA. That was who was here back in the sure. 80s and uh, 90s in Rochester. Very good group. Yeah, they, they were great people. I learned a lot. Um, I've got some of their kids in my program. <laughs> okay. so. And it, it is neat to hear the stories. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And I look at some of you folks and I go, you were in it? <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> right. Dave's tried to get me more than once, and yeah. I'm sure at some point I will. But uh, self-esteem, you know, that was something that I suffered from when I was younger. Uh, I was a talented kid, but I just didn't have that self-esteem. And I really gained that through the Taekwondo. Um, I would say that my, my mother would say that I learned a little bit of self-control and discipline through it all as well. So I know, you know, I started in middle school and went all the way through my high school years, as, again, achieving that rank of second degree. But there are lessons here 30 years later that I know I picked up from then that have to do with the self-control, that have to, you know, and there's a certain security that goes with it as well. 
I don't necessarily walk down the street in fear. Well, it's... I'm not looking for a fight. That's right. But I'm not in fear, if you will. And you sort of, when you're walking down the street, you're recognizing things around you. Mm -hmm. A little awareness. Awareness mm -hmm. of the situations. And, you know, we do a women's self-defense class and we talk about awareness and uh, going places in pairs yeah. and doing different things that way. Staying smart. Staying smart. <laughs> And college kids, yeah. kids going off school for the first time, you know, yeah. it's new, it's different. But the thing that you watch and I like to see is when we go to tournaments, and that's another piece mm -hmm. of the martial art is, yes, we go to tournaments, we compete. I was told early on, do not put yourself in a box. Mm -hmm. So do not go to the same tournament only. Do not compete against the same people yeah, Get some only. variety. Get variety. Mm -hmm. Learn how to uh, spar and meet and understand, you know, people from a Chinese system. Right. People from karate. Yes, we say we've got Shotokan karate in our system but you meet all these different schools and different ones and that's the neat part of martial art you get to meet a lot of different people yeah. from different areas that's that's neat. what you want but to watch the kids and to get them the confidence mm -hmm. when you teach them how to properly walk into a ring mm -hmm. how to properly address people mm -hmm. and we do a lot of bowing instead of handshakes, mm -hmm. but that's just coming back to the courtesy. Right. And you watch these kids and other people, the first time they walk into a ring, they're scared, mm -hmm. they're nervous, right. they're put into a situation that they're not used to. Yeah. And then after they've done it a few times, it's snap, snap, snap. Yeah. They've yeah. got it down. Respect and, is a big thing, too. And they you, get the respect and yeah. the confidence to walk in. Yeah. And you see so many people walking around with their head down yes, and whatever. Yes, especially youth. Yes. And that sometimes comes from maybe them being beaten down yeah, a lot yeah. or not, not feeling that they maybe, can. Maybe literally and figuratively there, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And that. So the martial arts gives them the confidence yeah. to work with each other. And, you know, it's, it's not about... Um, I look at the word respect, mm -hmm. you know, going down, but respect also goes up. It does. And you have to treat each one with respect. Yes. And once the kids get respect and they get the confidence that goes with it, you see them improve. Yeah, you, you begin to see them shine a little bit, don't That's you? That's right. And you know, I, I don't care whether it's the martial arts mm -hmm. or you take, can take basketball, can take baseball. Mm -hmm. When that kid, kid catches the ball for the first time, yep. they're so happy. Absolutely. And it's those positive results yeah. in activities that help them improve. That's neat, Dave. And that, so that's the nice part of it. One of the things that I think it's important to bring up is that if you join a martial art, you're, you know, you're not training fighters every day so to speak you know you're not training no. kids to go out and beat up people you're not training thugs that that would be the <laughs> fastest way to get kicked out of a martial arts I bet. school i bet as being a bully yeah and starting fights yeah yeah you are teaching people to be able confident that they can talk themselves out of the fight yes nothing good comes out of the fight but giving them the tools yeah. to handle themselves if they need to. Yeah, that's a really good that. point. I, I, my children, I have high school children now, and they know that dad's got a second-degree black belt collecting dust somewhere mm -hmm. in the basement. And they've asked, you know. Send them down. I can get them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I told, they said, well, you ever been in a fight? And I said, you know, the interesting thing about learning Taekwondo, especially in my youth, was that I'm trained that I don't have to fight. And uh, it's nice to know that I've been trained in the art, if you will, of not fighting. If I have to fight, 
hopefully some skills are still there, but it's really the preventative of it. Preventative. Once you have the knowledge of how to do and protect yourself, you realize how very few times your life is in that moment where you really need to pull out the martial art physical aspect of it and throw a kick or a punch. That is correct. Um, and it's, that's that's great. It's very few. Yeah. Probably uh, get shot for this, but <laughs> probably same with guns. Yeah. Very few times. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things, and it's different. When, when I was growing up mm -hmm. in northern Michigan. He's a up here. Well, I'm a troll. I'm below the bridge. <laughs> wants, and I'm not quite above he, it. He tells some good jokes that but way, though. When I was growing up, as kids, you know, we would be playing football or baseball or something, and invariably somebody would slide hard or somebody would do something. And we were in fights. Yeah. But an hour later, we were eating lunch yeah, together. Yeah, playing together again. And playing together. Yeah. But we learned to get bounced around. Right. And probably lose, lost a tooth over yeah. time or who knows what. We're a little more fragile these days, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> and my son, who has progressed up through the martial arts, mm -hmm. one day said to me, how do I know it works? It's <laughs> a good question. And, you know, he wanted to do the cage fighting. Mm -hmm. And... I thought, just don't tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. And, and that. I've been practicing all this. I want to make sure it works. Yeah. Oh, so my goodness. we did. I said to him, I said, Martin, you get five fights. At the end of the five fights, you're done. Wow. Because you know what it feels right. like. Right. He went out and did it, though. He went out and did it. Interesting. Interesting. He, we'll, we'll talk to Martin about that sometime. He won his first four fights. No kidding. Yes. Wow, I'm not going to mess with him. I mean, the first time <laughs> I thought, you're a punching bag. Right. Because he wasn't used to getting hit. Right. Then when it sort of kicked in on what he was doing, he took care of the guy. Nice. So then he had three more fights and he won those. Mm -hmm. So he had his fifth fight coming up. And we're out there, he's warming up. And I looked over and I saw this person across the hall from us, right. just watching him. And I went and got a nice leather black focus pad for kicking. Uh -huh. I said, Martin, throw some jumping, spinning hook kicks. Yeah. He threw three of them right in a row, snapped the pad and Pretty soon the official came walking over and he said, the guy forfeited to oh. you. <laughs> so he won his fifth fight by forfeit? So he won his fifth fight <laughs> by forfeit because they did not want to fight him. Oh, wow. They saw techniques from yeah. him that they had never seen before. Oh, that's neat. But in all honesty, you would not use those techniques in the ring. Yeah. But yeah. it got into the got mind Got into game. his head, right. Yeah. And that, and I said, you're done. <laughs> you completed it. You fought. You got hit a little bit. Yep. You got bounced around. Yep. You got roughed up a little bit. You know what it's physically like. And that. Yeah. And then uh, you I, got him mentally. I got hit in the temple with a uh, side heel wheel kick, a spinning kick that mm -hmm. caught me in the temple. And I was probably 15. And it knocked me out. And I had no desire to do any cage fighting after that one. I still <laughs> yeah. sparred. I still went to the tournaments. But it only takes once to get your bell rung pretty hard. To, oh, yeah. To realize that it's a real deal. We, we did that one year. We were down in, uh, and we've had some great times in the martial arts. Yeah. And one of the. My, you travel to tournaments and whatnot, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of my uh, very good friends is runs a school in, down in Bedford, Indiana. Uh -huh. And he's the one that got my son going and everything with it. And he's uh, seventh degree in Taekwondo. He's 
third degree in Hapkido. Wow. And he's got his second degree in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh my gosh. So he asks you how you want to play. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he does. I <laughs> don't want to play with I you. I don't want to play. <laughs> Let's just sit and eat, Greg. Well, you, talked so. on, you talked on this, you talked about the families. Uh, mom, dad, kids can all do it. Of course, I saw those families back when I was doing Taekwondo, but your family in particular, you, your son does it, your daughter-in-law does it. Daughter-in-law does. My grandson, Your grandson is going for his first degree black belt. Okay. And so it's for everybody. It's, it's for everybody and it's for every age. We yeah. can adopt the program to the movements of the individual. Gotcha. That's one thing I look at is every instructor should be able to get to that student. Mm -hmm. And if they want to progress and learn, the instructor needs to be able to teach them. And, good point. you know, I've, I talk about my grandson, very good kid, mm -hmm. but he's very active in, he was active in the Royal swimming. Uh -huh. He was cross country, loves cross country. I mean, yesterday he went out and ran 10 miles, Ooh, 14 no. year old. No. It was cold. Good for a 14 year old, bad yeah. for Scott. <laughs> I drove by him and yeah, waved. Yeah, <laughs> you you know, it's warm in here. Oh, that's great. But though. he's he gets involved in that. And this is probably what separates my belief or understanding is I've got kids that play soccer, played other sports. You know, they can come and go yeah. from the martial arts. Yeah, they can cross train over at your facility. That's right. Yeah. They can come over and either cross train or they can learn and progress up mm -hmm. and understand that they're not going to get a black belt in 40 months. Right, right. You can it's do it good. at your own pace, though? You can do it at your own pace. That's good to know. Uh, grandson started when he was... Five and a half. Five and a half. He's 14, oh and he's gosh. still getting close to his black belt, but he's been active in other That's things. That's neat, though. And so you and can do that. So you can do that. And um, I, I just think it's one of the best things going for people. That's great. And anybody can come out and do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are some that will say I'm 50 years old. Well... Put on your bucket list you want a black belt by the time you're uh, 56 right. or put something out there as a goal. It's a nice you, achievement. You can achieve it. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I did it when I was younger. You know, that's really well, one of the better times. You've got the time to do it. Um, but it is something I've been out. Of course, you've seen the commercials on Channel 4. I've been out there to film a few times. A little bit of the bug nipping at me a little bit to well, get back into that. Well, it's it's out there, and what I just invite people, come on out, give it a try, yeah. talk to us, look at look at what we have to offer, yeah. and figure out what you'd like out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, we're looking at some uh, new classes, maybe some after school, 3.30 Great. to 5 o'clock oh, classes. Nice, kind of like an after school program. Uh, after there. school program. Nice. And we've got the facility, as you've seen, We've got one room that we can set up where they can either chill out in one corner, right? Uh, tables where they can do homework, mm -hmm. or they can go over on the other side and we can run them through classes oh, that's and great. different things. So they so, can get their homework done, get some physical exercise, be ready to go home and do chores when mom and dad that's are That's right, off when work. mom and dad say get <laughs> this done, idea, they're dude. coming out with the attitude, I better get it done. Yeah, <laughs> no, I like that. That's and, great. And parents send me a list of what they want their kids to get done. Yeah. And, no, that is a good idea, so, and, and it's important. Uh, this is, you know, here in Rochester, um, so you're very accessible. Let's tell folks where you're at. We're out on uh, 1553 uh, North Old 31. It's okay. just across the railroad tracks pretty soon. Yep. You'll see a nice uh, Blue Dragon sign out front. we yep. got a couple martial art banners coming. Nice, uh, nice. But it's, uh, so that's just it, north on Main Street of Rochester. You just head out uh, not even a mile over the tracks nope. uh, on your east side of the road before you get to the former dean's building um, and one of the one of the things uh i mentioned earlier it's mm -hmm. a financial investment yeah um but when you really break it down per hour mm -hmm. you can't go to the movies for right what we charge you no, know we've talked about this it is not um 
it is not a major financial investment where you have to, you know, get a loan and, and do those type of things. It's it's more akin if it to is, avoid that school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't go to that school where they ask you to sign a loan. But no uh, contracts here. more akin yeah. to a uh, fitness club membership or something like that. Yes. If you're paying the money and you're not using it, well, <laughs> you know how you feel. It's sort of the same thing here, where you come in and uh, you get what you want out of it for yourself, uh, for your children. And that's an important thing I wanted to bring up before we close, Dave, is that this isn't something that folks out there that are watching this should be intimidated by. No, if they've they got not. an interest, they can pick up the phone, schedule a time, come out, sit down and just chat with you or any of your instructors about what it is that you guys stand for out there. That, that is correct. Okay. And that's what I tell folks. Come on out, talk to us. Yeah. Come out, take two, three lessons. Yeah. Uh, one night we'll teach technical side. Another night we might teach uh, sparring mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. some self-defense aspects. So you want to make certain you get yeah. all the flavor. Yeah. And with, uh, I hate to keep going back to finances, mm -hmm. but uh, for an hour and a half, twice a week for adults, it's $50. For the month? For the month. Uh-huh. And we'll have Saturday times they can come to uh, kids, the 6 to 12-year-old group. Mm -hmm. It's $40 for an hour. Yeah. So then if there's second member from the family, it's half price. Discounts on top of that. And you pay one and a half, Boy, you get the entire family in. Yeah, no you, kidding. Everybody wanted to come. That's a really you know, good point, Dave. And, and that's, that's what we're here for, though. Mm -hmm is for the family mm -hmm. and the commitment to it mm -hmm. because it's another one of those family activities you can do and yeah. then you can go to the different events and meet other family members yeah. and, and that's one of the things meet other martial artists yeah say hi say that, how are you doing and say you whooped me this time but i'm gonna get you next time <laughs> i like that friendly competition yes well i think uh, one of the important things for folks to remember here is that if you want the flash and the flare that's not what we're about here we've got real substance out at blue dragon taekwondo that's right and we keep it white white we keep the traditional belts that general Choi has yes. you know we we've no pink got camouflage a, belts no camouflage belts, Darn no uh, <laughs> twenty belts, no no testing every month. Uh, you know, you make it you make it affordable, but uh, a, a very worthwhile thing, folks. Again, Blue Dragon Taekwondo, they're one of our great sponsors here with Channel Four. We're happy to have them on board. And uh, Dave, you're doing great things out there. We'll do some demonstrations and get uh, some other folks from the Blue Dragon in here to talk to you about it. But uh, I want to thank you for your time coming in and explaining some of this to us here at RTC. My pleasure. And anybody have any questions or anything, we're always open to answer it yeah. and let you know what we're about. Excellent. We, we are not the only item out there, but we think we got a pretty good program. Well, we and like we it. We appreciate you it. Keep up the good work here in Rochester. Folks, uh, thanks for tuning in. Stop out. Blue Dragon Taekwondo right here in Rochester, one of your local favorites. Protect yourself from personal attack on campus, in the home, at the mall, or wherever you are. Blue Dragon Taekwondo in Rochester is offering a self-defense boot camp so that you have the basic skills to protect yourself in an attack. Blue Dragon is the area's leading martial arts facility. Master instructor Dave Colger and his team welcome new participants and those seeking to learn the basic self-defense techniques. Contact Blue Dragon Taekwondo today to learn more about this exciting self-defense boot camp. Townhome Furnishings in Rochester is the place to shop for all of your furniture needs. Sofas, recliners, love seats, dining sets, bedroom sets, mattresses, outdoor furniture, and more. All in your hometown. Stop out and see Don, Mary Kay, Linda, or Joe. They want to help you find the exact pieces to fit your needs. Shop online at townhomefurnishings.com. Hometown service, townhome style, townhome.